Hey everybody, you got one of these old heaters. Now this one's an old style and it use a, uses a hydraulic snap action valve. You see it has a temperature settings on that. Um, this one's in pretty good shape. If you can look in there, the burner's real clean, although it's got a little bit of scour on the outside in here. This is an old Duratherm heating unit and it uses a pretty simple valve and the valve is a snap action valve, which means that it uses a sensor bulb um, that comes off of it right here, this little wire here. So in this one's case, the bulb is right in there, right back here. And it's very similar to these Robert Shaw units, if you can see this where it has that bulb on it. Now this is a new Robert Shaw that does everything that that one does. And it's converted to propane. See the little black mark there. And uh, what I do with them is I'll get these heaters in and they're great for tiny houses because they require no electricity. And if you find one, these don't go bad, even though they look a little rough. These will last a very long time. They, they pull in air and they exhaust air, so they are vent, vented heating units, so you don't have to worry about propane gas, and they're very efficient, so you can run them off of a small tank, and what we've got here is we've got one that will not light and stay lit, and commonly, that is just one of these thermal couplers, which is mounted right here, and it goes up into the top of the valve over here on this one. Some of them, they'll go into the side. So in other words, the pilot will always be lit. But this is about a $10 or less item. And it's very easy to replace. You're working with a 7 16 here and a 3 8 in the back. And you'll just pull it out. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to do any kind of issues or damage by removing them. And look for the kit that has all the components in it. So you see this piece right here? That compresses on the thermal sensor right there. And this part sends that over to the valve so that the valve can open up after pilot. So in other words, the pilot will not burn if this is no good and it will not allow gas to open up and go to this valve. And that will stop your heater from working. And like I said, about a $10 part, pretty simple. First step you wanna do is make sure that your propane is turned off. You don't need to worry about bleeding it down. I just turn it off because I don't like working on one with life propane. Um, the second thing is 3 8 wrench. And what I've done here is I've cut back a little piece of metal here to be able to reach in there and get that top of the thermal coupler right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get that one pulled out. So right up in here, there is the top of the thermal coupler. It can be a real pain to get to, but it's only about six threads deep, so it's not going to be that hard. And once you get it loosened up, they'll usually turn out like that. And then you're just going to lift up once they clear. Pull them out of the way and get them out of there. Now you'll see that end there travels down and that compresses it into place. Now over here where this one is at, I'm just going to use a pair of channel locks, pump pliers to uh, get it freed up. And it's an old one, so I don't care. Straighten it out, make it easy on me. If you have to, take you some snips and cut it off right there to make it easier on you. It's no good, so whatever you got to do to it, do it. Just don't damage your heater here. Normally, I'd use a wrench on this, and I know people are going to say, use a wrench. Well, check it out. I really don't think too much about a used part. Don't save them. So, makes it a little easier to do that way. You'll pull it all the way out, and you see by the tips burnt like that, this one's bad. And we're gonna get a new one and get that put in. All right, 
right, now you're going to get your new thermal coupler, and I just pulled this out of the box and stretched out a little bit, and you're going to pre-bend it to kind of fit up in the valve where it will go, and mine's going to have to kind of work around the back there to get this in successfully, and um, it comes with two parts. It comes with your, your threaded adapter that mounts into your furnace, and it comes with your little lock. So your threaded adapter will go on like this, and then your lock, you see these little grooves right here? Your lock will go on, and it will press all the way down to hold this into place. You heard that snap, I hope. There you go, and then that holds it into place. The flame burns right there from your pilot. This sends the information back, the signal, that's what they're gonna call it, to the valve allows the main gas to open and allows the pilot to burn. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and get it meant to go in. I will leave me some free space and we'll work this in the back back here. And you wanna get that tip put in before you even try to start threading. I'll go ahead and pause and get this in. And it's just a reverse procedure. And then when we come back, I'll show you how I'm gonna flex this around and get it in there. All right, now we've got the thermal coupler mounted back here in the back, and we're going to go ahead and set it in and be careful with these threads. So make sure you're very straight going in there. And you can use a thermal coupler up to two and a half times the length of the original one that was on there without any issues or sending unit issues. I have seen some of them, if you replace a 12 inch with a 36, it, it won't light right. I don't know if that's related or, or just that one heater, but I saw that, so just a little fair warning. And we're gonna thread this one in, and then we're gonna try to fire this up and see if it holds a pilot, see if the pilot light will stay on and that the heater will cycle because you can listen here. I don't know if you can hear that. That clicking is this valve engaging the main gas, the thermostat valve from the bulb engaging the gas to come on and light the main burner. So we have a belief that it's going to work. Worth putting a $10 thermal coupler in to try it because it being a big, nice dual therm, it's also slight adjustable for wall thicknesses. These are just incredibly awesome. No electricity required. I save every one of these and sell them to people making tiny homes or uh, job campers or job shacks or things and they just love them. So they're very dependable. Instead of using that channel locks on that, we're going to use some real square jaw tool here because I don't want to damage it. Now, don't over tighten these. They will strip out immediately, so be careful. Just get them good and firm. It's not going to be an issue with gas leak. The, the draft is that direction, so you don't have to worry about it. Now, we'll turn the gas back on. And it might take a second for the gas to go through the hose, so don't panic and get up to the top. Set your valve for your pilot on. You're gonna press it in. And this works with numerous types of heaters that don't wanna light. Now, there we go. We finally have a pilot. Now, if I let go of it right now, there probably won't be enough heat signal to kick that on and hold the pilot. Oh, looks like it's working. We have pilot. I'd like to have shown you this earlier, but one that don't light is not exactly good for your video. Um, but if you don't light and everything else is working and gas is flowing and you could smell gas in your examination, you, you know that you have a problem and it's usually your thermocoupler. They're cheap enough, they fail if it sits for too long. So now we give it enough time, we're gonna turn it on. Let's get it to fire up. Now it's on. Oop. It's calling for heat with this open, so there she goes. Nice, big, pretty blue flame. So we have a heater that's about 25 years not used, 20 to 25 years, now burning. And we'll get the covers back on. And this is for lighting your pilot light. This little piece of metal here just loosens up and spins up. But to do this video, I wanted to make sure you guys could see it while doing the video. Look at that thing. It's cleaning itself out right now. A little bit of rust residue on that burner. But we'll put this back on. 
and it just has a couple of wing nuts. You'll loosen one wing nut to spin it up to light it. These are manual light. They don't require a gasket. I'm not going to leak a bunch of gas out. This is uh, 16, or this is this is uh, 16 gauge metal. It's pretty stout. Same stuff a muffler is made out of. Your muffler on your car burns propane, so it will have a little moisture in it. So do examine the internals. And the best way is you look at these welds, all these spot welds. If you see spot welds that are buckled anywhere, then you've got rust inside, too much moisture. And it's probably probably not a good unit, but you can see my spot welds are just fine. There's no buckling around them. And that buckling is when the moisture gets trapped in the seam and the heat causes it to expand because it's rusted out. So we'll go there. And right now, I would say that I've got plenty of heat. Let's see, the shop floor temperature is 59 degrees in here. And the heater is at 360. And if I get down there closer to the burner, 500. This is the different baffled chamber up here. This is the burner expansion chamber. And then this is the air inlet chamber that you'll see here. So all that explained out here, you've got 81 degrees, that's intake air with an exhaust of 227 degrees. So if that gives you an idea of how much efficiency you're dealing with, this is your air temperature exposed to your room. And there's a 300 degree difference coming out versus exhausting. Pretty damn efficient. All right, guys, that was easy enough. Hope the video wasn't too long. I'll try to cut it and make it shorter. But there you go. Repair it yourself.